Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be one of those highly requested videos where we'll try and learn to digitize our watercolor or any sort of painting basically. I'm going to pick this watercolor painting that I did a really really long time ago and uh, we're going to try and convert this into a digitized form so that you can use them to make different kinds of things uh, like this. I'll show you how you can first of all remove the backgrounds and edit it and then you can arrange these things to use it in different formats um, for your templates for your invites or anything that you want to use them for or even patterns for that matter. Before we begin, I'd like to tell you that I have an Instagram account called Print Me Some Color where I usually post art and sometimes comics uh, about what I'm doing right now. And um, if you have some time, go check it out and um, go give it a follow. To just to give you a background, I have painted this with the Ecoline liquid watercolors on mixed media paper. What that means is the paper is really smooth, so there's not a lot of texture to it. So it's much easier to process it in Photoshop. So for this video, what you need is your painting. It does not matter if it is on a plain sheet of paper or something which is highly textured. Just know that with a textured paper, it takes a little bit of extra steps to get rid of that uh, extra tiny things around the artwork. We'll be using Photoshop to edit these uh, tiny flowers and leaves. Don't worry if you're new to Photoshop, it is very simple and I'll walk you through each and every step on how you can do this. By end of this tutorial, we'll have each individual item as a clear PNG, that is with a transparent background, which you can use later on for print-on-demand sites to create your designs or anything and everything that you want to do with them. I'll make a separate video on how to convert these elements into patterns in Photoshop so that you can use them on print-on-demand sites like either Spoonflower or Redbubble and Society6. Alright, so let's just get started. The first thing to do is take your artwork and we need to scan them. So let's go to the scan settings. Alright, these are my scan settings. So I've scanned it using a HP Envy 4520 series. It's not an excellent printer uh, and it does not matter that you have a high quality scanner. It's totally fine. So there are a few things that you need to know while uh, scanning your artwork. I usually scan my artwork at 600 dpi. It also depends on what I'm going to do with these things. So if I plan to have it printed on a really large scale, I would go much higher. Uh, my print scanner allows up to 1200. I think that's the what most of them allow. But keeping a higher DPI would also mean having large files. And my computer does not have the enough computing power to actually work with really huge files. So for me, 600 works fine. And I'll tell you what you can do with that. Instead of choosing 300, I'm choosing 600. The format would be JPEG. And uh, please choose no image correction. We're going to do this in Photoshop. So click on scan. Okay, we just scanned our artwork. Let's go and check it. Now it's time to get your scanned artwork into Photoshop. So all you have to do is right click, open with and Photoshop. This might look a little different for Windows users, but um, I'm sure it's not that different. All right, so our image is here. And now it's time to work with the resolution that we have. So the idea of having it at 600 dpi was the fact that you could scale this image a little bit more. So I'll just go to my image and then image size. And you can see it's 600 dpi and there's a width 3652. Make sure this link is always connected. And now I'm just going to copy this by selecting or control C to copy. And now I'll make a quick calculation that is, I'll type this and into 2. That is 7304. And now I'll go here and change this to 300 and make this 7304. So as you can see, this will increase the size. That is double. And then the resolution is still high. That is 300. And click OK. All right. So you can see that the size double. So now we're going to save this as a PSD file because we don't want to mess with the original scan that we have. So go to file and save as. And let's save this as a Photoshop file. Click save. Now that the file is saved, it's time to work our magic. The first thing that I'm going to do is rotate this image because it's really bothering me. So go to image image rotation and you can give 180 degree. 
and we have our image rotated. Next, let's look at these elements. Some of them are really nice and bright, but some of them are really dull down. First thing we're gonna do is adjust the color settings for this. One thing to note is that if you have a paper that is highly textured, this is a step where you can get rid of those textures. You can go to your adjustments panel, you can get it under window and then adjustments. And here, first we're gonna click on levels. We're gonna set our brightest and the darkest level here. So click on this eyedropper tool and click on the brightest color that you see on your sheet. And now click on the darkest and let's choose a darkest color that you see. Maybe this one. Nope, that was the wrong one. I'm just going to scroll in. Okay, I think this is fine. These are a little bit bright, but that was the look I was going for. Okay, so once you have this, you can also use these things here to increase the level of it. So this makes it darker and this makes it lighter, but you lose a lot of elements if you toggle this. I'm just gonna keep it at that. Okay, so let's close this. Now your levels are set. So when you use this adjustments panel, instead of going from image and then adjustments, the thing is, these things come up as a different layer. So if you don't want it, you can just uncheck this and look at how it looks. Or you can go ahead and modify this. So I think this looks fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to work with this right here. So let's just go ahead. I'm just going to right click and then merge layer or merge down. So this is our edited PSD file. You can go ahead and save this or you can start work all over again. But I usually do this and I just save it by pressing Command S. All right, now it's time to edit our elements. So let's just start with this one right here. So I'm just going to my lasso tool here. If you cannot see it, right click and then lasso tool. Click and make a very nice circle around it. Press Command or Control C to copy. And I'm going to file. And new so it will automatically pull up all the uh, height and width of this element so you don't have to do anything here and just click on create now press command V or control V to paste it so if I turn off this background layer you can see that it still has the white spaces and now our task is to remove this white spaces and make it PNG so let's just do that click on the background again let's have it go to I'll just scroll in a little bit like this go to select and then color range in here first of all click on invert because we want to get rid of this space and not the main artwork and now all the highlighted pink it could be some other color here you can select what you want it could be black matte this looks better I guess and a white matte this does not work or grayscale um, this is okay you could do black matte as well so I like to keep usually quick mask because it's more nicer. And now here in fuzziness, we're going to increase this and do this until we see a decrease in the whites. That's a lot. Let's just bring it down a bit. Maybe this much. Okay, click OK. And now you can see the lines are exactly here. All the space is going to go up. All right, so this is the lines that are covering the artwork. Okay, imagine a scenario where you don't want it to be too inside. You want this lasso line to be a little outside because, you know, it's not covering up the entire artwork. So you can go to select and click on modify and then expand and then give one or two pixels. Let's give it one pixel. See what happens to the line right here. Okay, and then it kind of moves. So you have two options, contract or... Uh, expand so you can use that but I'm going to undo this because I really don't want that extra thingy right here but there are a few places here which is getting selected so we're going to change that if you are on your lasso tool you can press there are two things one if you hold your option or alt key you can see a lasso with minus and if you hold your shift key down it will see a plus so we want this area to be included in our artwork so I'm just going to draw through it and then it's going to unselect it that means it's not going to get clipped out so we can do the same thing here. For example, this one, 
I don't want this to be included in the artwork. So I'm just going to go hold my option or alt and click through this. And that is going to get deleted. So if you see any of the lasso things happening here, you can go ahead and edit it. I think that looks fine. And now it's time to remove the background. To do that, just go to this button right here and it says add a layer mask. Now if I remove this, you can see the background is completely gone. So to do a final check, we have to check if there are any spots that we missed. So I'm just going to my background. You can either change the background color, but I like to do as make a new layer. Go to my rectangle tool and make sure it's selected black and click and draw a rectangle. Now we have a black layer and then if you scroll in, you can see all these tiny things which got picked up during our process. So we're going to try and remove these things, but I find it much easier to do it on Erase Tool. I just click on my Erase Tool. You can right click and click on Erase Tool. So let's adjust this eraser. If you go here, you can adjust this thickness or the size of it. This is still too big. This looks fine. I like to keep it in hard round. And then just go ahead and erase these things over here. All right, uh, so we are done with our clearing up. So this looks pretty fine. And now I'm going to uncheck this or I'll click on this layer and delete it off. So now go to your layer mask, click on this, right click and select apply layer mask. So your element is ready and now it's time to export this. Go to file, export. You can quick export as a PNG or click on export as. And now you can just click on export all. Let's give this as flower one and click save. And make sure to save this as flower one as well. So file, save, but we're gonna change it as a PSD file. See, let's go check it. So this is your PNG and it's ready for anything that you want to do with it. Now I'll show you how to change color if you really want to. So once you have this layer ready, go to hue and saturation. And here you can adjust these things to make different modifications to that. So, and then you can export it as a PNG again. So now that we have finished editing it and exporting it, it's time to see what you can do with this in an Illustrator. So let's just go ahead and open Illustrator. So this is something that you can do with these elements. For example, these are all uh, individual elements. I've just grouped them together. Let me just ungroup. And then you can modify. And this is the image that I actually did that. So let me just undo all of that. Okay, so you can get them here and arrange them and I'll show you how to do that. When you are in the Illustrator, you can say File and Place and navigate to your folder and click on the PNG file that you did and then it shows you how to do that. So click and drag and then you can it lets you put in your watercolor image. So you can bring it in here and edit those things to create your own patterns or something like that. These are the uh, watercolor elements that I've used to create a pantry label. So yeah, that's how you can edit your watercolors and use them in Illustrator or even in Photoshop for that matter. As I told you, I'll make a separate video on how to use it in Photoshop. And um, okay, if you have any questions, just let me know. Let me know if I didn't cover anything and I'll be happy to respond as soon as I can. So I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.